In this lesson, we look at embedded system documentation in general, and then specifically for the Nucleo uh, F401 board um, that is being used in this course. The focus is on hardware, and we specifically don't cover documentation that you would write, like documentation for the application software. We first talk about documentation in general at the board level, then the MCU level, and then the CPU level. With that structure in mind, we then look at the documentation for the Nucleo board with the attached GPS module. When working with embedded, it is good to understand this documentation structure. Part of the learning curve is to know what documentation exists and which document contains information for a particular topic. Of course, Google and Stack Overflow can provide you with a lot of information, but sometimes the quality of the information is not great. And for very detailed issues, you might not find out much information at all. This diagram is a conceptual view of embedded systems documentation. The white boxes on the left are examples of the topics of documentation, and the list on the right side are the actual documents. As you can see in this figure on the left, there is a hierarchy of documentation. We have the board level, and then within the board we have the MCU, or system on a chip, and within the MCU we have the CPU. I'll explain this using a top-down approach. Now for different embedded systems, the documentation might not be structured exactly like this, but the concept should apply. So we'll start with the board level. Of course, a very important uh, document for the board is the schematic. It tells you exactly what is on the board and how things are connected. Now it takes some knowledge of electronics to read a schematic, but you don't need to be an expert to find out things like the pinouts of a connector. I would encourage you to take a course or, or do self-study in electronics if you are working in embedded. The next thing is data sheets for components on the board, other than the MCU, which we'll address later. For example, the board might have an LCD display or keyboard or sensor on it. We might include modules connected to the board via a serial link or a bus, such as the GPS uh, module we'll be using in this course. Now for the board, we might have a technical reference or user manual. Now whether this exists depends on who developed the board. If you're working for a large company, the hardware designers might have written a formal manual, um, but maybe not. If you work for a small company, there might be nothing but the schematic. It's hard to say. In that case, if there is no uh, documentation other than the schematic and you have questions, you have to find the board designer. As you may know, the problem with internal documentation, by the way, is many companies, uh, the, internal the internal documents are just not kept up to date as well as it should. So um, finally, has been my experience in working in Embedded, is that there are how-tos or crib notes that are passed between developers. A common thing is that when you're working on a project and you get a brand new board, uh, there is some initial configuration that needs to be done. Maybe hardware jumpers, or maybe you have to load the software in a special way. So there might be notes uh, from other developers on how to do that. So now let us move to the MCU, or system on a chip level. At this point, the documentation is coming from an outside supplier and is perhaps more formal and consistent compared to internal board documentation. The two major documents are the data sheet and the reference manual. I should mention that it is possible that these two documents are combined into one. The data sheet is for specific MCU part numbers. The part numbers are usually listed on the title page. This document contains information that tends to be more physical, such as pin assignments, power and voltage levels, uh, clock frequencies, the number of resources like memory, the number of peripheral types like UARTs, and so on. On the other hand, the reference manual tends to be more general. For example, it describes in detail each type of internal 
peripheral and how you use them in your code, regardless of what kind of MCU they are in. For example, the reference manual will tell you how to use a timer in your code, but will not specify which pins are used or perhaps even how many timers exist. Exactly what information in each document can vary, and it takes some experience to know in which manual you'll find some information. Usually, the reference manual is much larger than the data sheet, but these days the data sheets are not tiny either. For writing software, I have used reference manuals much more than data sheets. However, you have to be careful as there have been times when I just used a reference manual to get information on a topic and later found out there was some added relevant information in the data sheet. The next thing I mention is errata. Many kinds of documents have errata, sometimes known as a errata sheet, that describe errors in the documentation or bugs in the product. For product bugs, the errata often describes a suggested workaround. So when errors are discovered, rather than republish the documentation, the supplier might publish errata that explains the issue and how to deal with it. As you could imagine, the issues in the errata might not impact you or they might be very important. There is also a class of documentation called application notes. These are typically documents that explain in more concrete terms how you might use the MCU to perform some function. A good example is security features, which can be complex and confusing. I have found that sometimes an application note will contain some descriptions that make the information in the data sheet or reference manual more clear. There might even be cases where there's information in the application note that you have never seen in the data sheet or reference manual. And the final thing I list here is not hardware documentation, but it's software documentation that is often present, and that is driver libraries. Um, that can be used with a particular MCU and these driver libraries being provided by the um, manufacturer of the MCU. Next we move to the CPU level. Now very often the MCU documentation does, does not describe the CPU in detail since the CPU design is from another company like ARM or the same CPU is used in many MCUs, so the supplier documents the CPU separately. So we have another level of documentation. Like with MCUs, the CPU might have two main documents, a technical reference manual specific to a particular processor and an architectural reference manual that is common to a family of processors. The architecture reference manual um, would describe more abstract things such as the CPU instruction set and the number and usage of general purpose registers. Of course, some CPUs might have a single combined document. The CPU supplier might also provide peripherals that are closely tied to the CPU and are documented, it, documented by the same company. A very common example is memory management or memory protection units that are used for virtual memory or, or memory protection. Another example is an interrupt controller. In cases like this, you might have to look through several documents until you find the one with the information you need. Finally, uh, just like with MCUs, there may be errata and application notes at the CPU level. Now we'll look at the specific documents for the Nucleo board used for this course. I won't go through everything, just some key documents. Now there are copies of these documents in the GitHub website for this course, and that is what I'm using here. To make the lesson move faster, I've loaded some of the documents in separate tabs in my browser. So here I am looking at the README file for the third-party uh, docs folder in the repo. We start at the board level with the Nucleo board. Now this is a commercial board versus being a proprietary board you might use if working for a company. 
This means the documentation might be better because it is intended for a wide audience rather than a proprietary board where there might just be a handful of developers. Now, there are some links here uh, that point to documentation for this board. I'm not going to go through, the, through those. I just want to look at the um, schematic since that's an important uh, board level document. And we have it loaded here. Now, the schematic is four pages, and page two here might be the most interesting page. This shows the actual MCU, and we see things like this is at 32 kilohertz uh, crystal. This is the uh, reset button here. Um, here's a user button. And uh, here, for example, over here are the um, UART signals, the transmit and receive signals that are, will be used for the console. The next page I'm not too interested in because this is the ST-Link uh, subboard. This is just the debugger interface, which we really don't care much about. And finally, on page four, that is an interesting uh, page because this shows the uh, connectors that are used to hook um, I.O. to the board. Going back to the README file, we have documentation on this GPS GTU7 module. Now, that was an inexpensive GPS module I found on the web, but I haven't been able to find really good documentation on it. I have looked around a lot and found documentation for similar boards and similar chips, and this documentation has turned out to be uh, pretty good. Now we'll go to the MCU level documentation. So this link points to the, um, the site, the website for general documentation for this MCU. But the things we're most interested in are the data sheet and the reference manual. And I have those preloaded. So let's look at the data sheet. Um, the first thing I'll point out that this is 135 pages. I'll mention that if you go down here, it gives you a little table of the precise part numbers that this data sheet applies to. Now, this table of contents over here is going to be difficult to read, but some of the main things are on it are pinouts and pin description, the uh, memory mapping, um, electrical characteristics, package characteristics, and that sort of thing. Now, here on this tab, we have the reference manual. I'll note that it's 847 pages, quite a bit bigger than the uh, data sheet. And its chapters tend to follow the hardware modules and peripherals that are inside the MCU. So we see chapters on things like GPIO, uh, DMA controller, A to D, uh, timers, um, here's the I squared C interface, here's the real-time clock, SPI, and so forth. The thing that we don't see in either of these documents, the reference manual or the uh, data sheet, is a lot of information about the CPU. Now we'll go to the CPU level. First, there is a document about the ARM architecture. This document is not very long and I would suggest you look at it because it gives a good introduction to the ARM product family. Now we have the ARM processor technical reference manual. Let's take a look at that. It is 107 pages and gives basic details of what's inside that processor. From the table of contents we see some interesting sections like memory protection unit, uh, an interrupt controller, a floating point unit. So these are examples of the modules I uh, mentioned before that are closely coupled to the CPU and are document, documented at the CPU level.
If we go to page 17 of this document, it mentions right here that this processor implements the ARM 7E architecture, 7E-M architecture. And then very conveniently it tells us uh, exactly the name of the architecture reference manual. So we can go to that. We notice that that is 858 pages. And if we look at the um, table of contents, there is a lot of content on the instruction set for um, this processor. And there's actually multiple instruction sets. That's really a very key element of the architecture of a CPU. Now if we go to um, page, what is it, 187, I just sort of picked this at random, but this is an instruction in the instruction set. And it happens to be add with carry immediate. And there's a little uh, description of what it does. Then we are given the coding in binary. It's, there's ones and zeros, and then some of these fields relate to registers that you um, have chosen and so forth. It tells us what the syntax would be for this instruction if you were writing assembly code. And then finally, it, it precisely defines what the instruction did uh, using pseudocode. So this is as low as it gets, folks. All software, no matter um, what language you're using, eventually gets down to instructions like this. This is the beauty of our computing machines. So I think that brings us to a fitting end of our look at documentation. Thanks for watching.